we are experiencing a lengthy yellow for apparently a blown oil gasket on the Genesee beer wagon number 56 car. Steve chassing the pits trying to get it repaired. We have also been successful in contacting Al Unser Jr., who is right now continuing the lead, and maybe we can do something a little special. But first of all, little Al, how's it going out there? Things look very, very smooth. Oh, uh, well, you know, uh, I've been very fortunate to have the car right at the beginning of the race. So, you know, now I think Johnny Rutherford and, and, uh, and uh, Rick Mayers, you know, they're both looking I guess it's so, you know, I don't know what when the green falls again. What about the pit infraction? Was it a little difficult to figure out what was going on without radio contact? Uh, and then, you know, there was, I didn't know what was wrong because I didn't, I didn't make that big of an infraction. Well, little Al, you've uh, lost radio contact with the pit crew. Jack Carew right now is down with your crew chief, and uh, maybe we can arrange something just a little special. Jack? Well, that's right, Larry. We're with Dennis Swan, and he cannot communicate with Al Unser Jr., but we're going to give the microphone to Dennis, and hopefully you can trans transport on to Al any questions they may have. Dennis, here you go. The mic's all yours to talk to Al. Thank you. Al, can you read me right now? They've got to translate. They've got to translate to you. You okay. ask the question, and then Larry will ask him. All right. Al, I want to know about your left front tire. Al, this is from your crew chief. This is from Dennis. He wants to know about the left front tire. Does everything look routine? Both, uh, both front tires are Al, come back on that. Somebody stepped on your lines. They're, they're, they're good, you know. Yeah, what I need to know is, do we need to do a four-tire change to get rid of the push? Do we need to do a four-tire change the next time we come in to get rid of the apparent push, Al? Well, I don't, I don't know. I don't, uh, I don't think so, you know. Thank you. The car's working pretty good. Tell him the car's working pretty good. That, that I like the little bit of push that's in it, you know. Well, apparently, Al well, that's Jr. The that's the change, gentlemen. I've never had to be able to interview a crew chief that interviews a driver through Larry Newber. Kind of unusual, but a first for ESPN and television, I believe. Yeah, it really was, Jack. And I would imagine that Al Unser Jr. really appreciated that because he's been out there in silence. All he's had is the roar of the engine for apparently this entire race, Gordy, and uh, that would be a welcome sign. Human well, voices. It certainly helps. Uh, it, it is difficult without your radio. Well, this time around, the green flag apparently will flutter. We are borrowing one of the team radios. That's our ability and the reason why we've been able to communicate. The green flag is out on the top five cars are the ones on the lead lap. Ken Allenser Jr. hold on to the lead. Rick Mears has darted down low. It looks like Mears may have the advantage going into turn number one, but no. That traditional saying, slamming the door shut as the rest of the field goes by, Al Unser Jr. holds on. Johnny Rutherford running one of those old pride and proven techniques from oval track racing from maybe 25 years ago, able to emerge in second spot. What do you think, Gordy? Is this Al Unser Jr.'s race, or do those other guys in the lead lap, namely Rutherford, Mears, Rahal, and his dad, have a chance? Well, they certainly have a chance. They're all right here, just about evenly spaced out now. Uh, little Al doesn't have the advantage that he had before. And they're all running quick about the first five cars, it looks like, right here, running uh, pretty competitive. Well, looking at the field as they rocket by there between turns two and three, you're really good at that. And we've had a lead change. Johnny Rutherford surprisingly goes to the inside of Al Unser Jr. And Rutherford, for the first time in 1985, assumes the lead under a green flag condition. He has got to be smiling inside that well, Lone Star helmet. Yeah, he sure is. Uh, and he's running quick, too. He seems to be pulling away from Al just a little bit right now. Uh, when they made their stop, they probably got the tire stagger just right on the car, and he's really running quick. You could uh, hear um, Dennis was concerned about little Al of, of the pushing condition, but he said it wasn't too bad. But evidently, it is bothering him somewhat. At least two more pit stops will probably take place before this race is over. Five cars again on the lead lap. They are the five cars up front there. Michael Andretti in the blue and yellow car, which is...
which is sixth in line, is also sixth in the race. But unfortunately, Michael, probably because of that little minor problem, minor problem, small, losing a right front wheel. Early in the race, however, he lost the lap. He is one lap down. Danny Sullivan is in seventh position. There's the leader, Rutherford. He is also one lap down. There's a look at John Rutherford. In eighth is Anderson Fittipaldi. He is two laps down. And in ninth, in car number one, Mario Andretti. Tenth, Pancho Carter. They, too, are two laps down. But this guy isn't down, not down at all. Not only has he assumed the lead, but there he is checking the mirror saying, hey, this is going pretty good. Just how far ahead am I? Clearly, that's something that's a pretty good habit to develop, that whenever you get out of the corner and go down the front stretch, actually move that head and uh, look behind you to make sure nobody is close, right? Well, yes, it is. There's a spin into the wall. It looks like it's Rutherford. Danny Sullivan, I think. It's either Sullivan or Rutherford. I think it's Johnny. And right in front of Michael Andretti, Johnny Rutherford, fire coming out of the engine compartment. Johnny moving around inside some unburnt fuel there inside the exhaust headers and coming out of the turbocharger, igniting it. It does not look like it will be a major incident, but Johnny Rutherford, after performing so well, it looked like the things were really going to go his way today. Apparently it got away. Gordy, it's tough to tell because he couldn't see it on the line live. It sure is. He's out there leading the race. Looks like he's running very smooth. I don't know what happened. We didn't see it right at first, but he's just sitting there in a the car. I'm sure he's all right, but you can imagine how depressed he is. Boy, at 200 miles per hour, things happen really quick. Well, Al Unser Jr. is uh, taking this opportunity. This will be a relatively lengthy caution fly to come in and perhaps change those tires that he were so stop. much of a question. He, right going. he went right through that time, apparently trying to just visually communicate with his crew chief and tell everybody on the crew what he would like to do. Is that what would happen in a situation like this, Gordon? You know you can't talk to them, so I come in, I can signal to them because this caution flag will take a while. Well, no, he have another chance. He just thought he was going to be the first one in. He probably knew that everybody was going to stop behind him. I, uh, I don't know why they didn't let him stop and go ahead and fuel up. Uh, I don't. The pace car wouldn't have caught him. Uh, I don't understand. Well, let's try to make contact with Al again and we'll see exactly if we can get an update. Al, this is Larry Newber again on ESPN. What's going on? Have you had an opportunity, you think, to signal to the crew and give the instructions to them that you want? Larry, I don't know, you know. I down and, and, and talk to my guys, you know. I give it to my guys so that your race is working to me. My guys right here ain't working to me. And I want my radios working, you know. Well, obviously, hey. Alan... Al Unser Jr. wanting to see if there's any possibility. Al, one thing just to give you an update, we are checking on the possibility of getting that radio from us to you down to the crew chief. That might be impossible, but we're working on that possibility. Al Unser Jr. Al Unser Jr. right now is trying to get communications with his crew so that things can be done to get just the right tire setup that he desires. Jack Arruda is down in the pit area. We're here with Dennis Swan, and let's let's first establish what the situation is. We do not have one of your radios, Dennis. Right. What we have is a monitor, which allows us to hear your communications. Now, you can hear, but we've been, uh, unfortunately, we haven't been able to let Al Jr. know that we don't have one of your radios. Yeah. Yeah. Larry. Can you talk directly to Larry? Yeah, Larry, what you got to do is you got to tell him we have to stay in line. We'll tell him when to pit. Just stay out. Because of the rain, we can't come in right now. You got to stay up in the queue. Well, Al, this is Larry again up in control. And uh, some clarification for you. We do have a scanner. It is not one of the team radios, and we have, therefore, no way to get down to you. But your crew chief has said you must stay in line, and they will signal you when to come in. You got a reading on us, Al? Oh, now, you know, now you're full. It's breaking down. Well, one more time, we'll repeat because we're getting some breakup back from you, Al, just to make sure that you got the message. Dennis has suggested that you stay in line, that they will signal you when to come in because of the rain. They do not want you to pit. And again, uh, we don't have one of the team radios as we thought. It's a scanner, so no way to get it to you. You got a reading on us, Al. Yeah, he's waving. I think he's finally uh, he's finally getting the signal. 
obviously a little bit of frustration coming from the cockpit of Al Unser Jr. He is concerned because he cannot communicate the way he wants to. There is no radio communication with the crew. If so, he could explain exactly what he wanted. Jack Root is continuing to monitor this situation down in the pit area. And Dennis Swan heard his comment, I just lost this race, and as he walked away, he chuckled and he said, let me tell you what, not yet. Well, we are under caution flag, and I would kind of echo those sentiments. It doesn't seem like not yet. This should be a relatively long caution flag. Johnny Rutherford hitting the outside cement in turn number one. No apparent injury to Johnny, but really smacking the outside cement wall after leading this race. And that does leave a lot of time. There is Allenter Jr. scooting underneath Rutherford as he grinds along the cement wall on the outside of that 14-degree bank, 670-foot corner. Johnny Rutherford who looked like he might be destined for greatness. There you see it just before the impact. Gordy, he spun first, and he almost backed into the wall. Yeah, he hit with the nose first, though, and it threw it around. Just hoped that it, uh, he didn't hit hard enough that uh, it, it's hurt his feet. But uh, he was pretty lucky right there that someone didn't get him broadside also. He's sliding right back down the track in front of Michael Andretti, a lap down Michael. And uh, at that point, Michael just points the race car to where Johnny is and uh, stands on the throttle and tries to get around. But Johnny Rutherford, after that great opportunity to perform well here, looks like he's certainly <laughs> dead for today. Johnny Rutherford, we will update you on his personal physical condition when this break is over. Stay with us for more of the Domino's Pizza 500.